So, hi everyone. We're here and I'm going to show you the basics on paper bead making on the, to make two beads. Um, here's what you'll need. First of all, a ruler. And I just have this really big ruler and it's kind of messy because I use it for everything. But you need paper. And this is just regular um, thin card, uh, uh, not cardstock, um, scrapbook paper. Uh, just the regular size. This is the bigger size. Uh, you need scissors, uh, a pencil, uh, or a pen. I'm using a pen so you guys can see it better. Mod Podge or glue, and I'm going to be using Mod Podge. And I have this. I have the satin. Uh, Sat, or not satin, the matte finish because I use it for my art journal and this is what I have so this is what I'm going to be using. You can use any kind of Mod Podge though. Uh, you're going to be needing a paintbrush. Let me scoot this over here so you can see. Paintbrush. Um, and that's for the Mod Podge so it can be a crappy paintbrush or like, you know, one that you don't use to actually paint with. <coughs> and a bead roller. I, I use this, this is like a shish kebab stick, a skewer, um, and it's just regular skewer. Um, this is what I've been using for a very long time, but I just recently um, got this, and this is really, really nice roller, and um, so this is what I'm going to be using, but you can use a stick. You can use a toothpick as well, um, just a regular toothpick. Uh, if you want to uh, and if you're going to be um, oh and sealing sealing sorry I almost forgot you need this is a polycrylic water-based uh, sealant this is clear satin and this little tube I bought in Walmart or this little um, canister I bought in Walmart um, I can't remember how much it was. It was less than twenty dollars, though, um, and this lasts forever. This will last. This whole thing will last me about a year, with all even with all the paper beads that I make. So it's definitely a good um, investment. And that's to seal. That's to seal and protect your beads. And you also need monofilament, or uh, monofilament, or beading. Um, nylon beading thread or something like this this is like fishing line um, and this was cheaper than the beading thread so I went ahead and got this and this is to hang up your um, your beads when they're drying and you need toothpicks of course toothpicks um, and those are also to help hang up your beads when they're drying if you have another way that you like to hang your beads up when they're drying you can do that but for this um, tutorial I'm just going to use those and show you how I do it okay so let's get started you're going to flip your paper over and we are going to measure now there are two ways to do this if if you want your beads thicker like let's see if I have one to show you like this right here then then you you want it facing this way long ways if you want them thinner like this one then you want it facing this way so let me see if i can show you okay so this way is what I'm going to do today because I get more beads out of this one, out of this way, and so um, I want more beads because with this, um, with this, I'm not going to put anything over it, but I'm going to show you um, how to use this as a core. This is just regular um, um, magazine paper, and I use this as a core for to for the beads. So I would put. A paper like a pattern paper over it and I don't do this for all of them but I do do this for some of them that um, where I want the pattern where I want the pattern at 
um, if I wanted a specific pattern, like because this paper is an all over pattern, it's okay. I'm gonna go ahead and use it like this and roll it like this, but you'll see what I mean later. I'll show you that later. Um, okay, so you get your ruler. Let me move some of this stuff out of the way, okay? And here's what I do. This is not a, a specific, specific um, thing. I mean, it doesn't have to be absolutely perfect. I am going to do one inch beads. So that's to here. Um, I hope you can see this, okay? Let me move the camera back a little bit. There we go. One inch beads to here. You can do half inch beads. You can do one and a half inch beads. You can do two inch beads. Any these um these ones that I have here are one inch. And that's usually on my two beads, I usually do one inch. I will be doing some half inch ones in the future, but for right now, uh one inch is what I have. So is what I do. So um I'm left-handed, so how is this gonna work? Hmm. Measure the one inch and put a little mark. And then the two inch put a mark, three inch and put a mark, four inch and put a mark, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Now sometimes at the end, not with these two beads, but with other beads and with other with other um, papers, um, if you look right here, you'll see this is one inch. Um, but sometimes it's less. If it's less, I put an X there, so I know not to use that one. Then we are going to t put your paper to the top again, uh, or up, move your paper up to the top, and we're going to do the same thing on the bottom. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Okay. Move our thing. Okay. Now, if you have um, one of these, this is a a cutter. If you have one of these, um, you can use it, and you don't have to do the next step. Um, I am not going to use mine. I'm going to show you the next step. So you turn your paper like so and you put your ruler up to the lines and draw a line across do the same thing all the way down and I'll probably fast forward this so I can so you guys don't have to sit here and watch me draw lines. <laughs> and unfortunately, my video camera only records 20 minutes at a time. Okay, so we're back. Now we are going to cut our lines. I see all the lines on there. Now we're gonna cut our lines. And usually I have bigger scissors, but the kids took them. So now I'm using their kitty scissors <laughs> instead of my good scissors. So it takes longer to cut. So I'm gonna fast forward this. And I just wanted to show you if you cut on the line, just cut all the way down the line. And, um, and then I'm going to fast forward this and I'll be back when I'm done cutting the strips out.
Okay, so I have my paper strips cut. And I'm going to show you how I roll them with this. Um, I'm going to get my Mod Podge ready. And I'm going to show you how I roll them with both. We're going to start with this and um, the shish kebab skewer. And I'll show you how I roll them with that. And then I'll show you with the other. So you take your stick and you place it on the back side. See, this is the front side. So this is the back side. You place it on the front side of your, or on the back side of your strip of paper. And you kind of roll the paper over a little bit and press it on, onto the stick. Um, to, and roll it to kind of give it a little um, curve so that it stays on. And then you tightly roll forward or it depends on which I'm left-handed so I roll a different way than other people but you can roll you can roll upward also and what I do I like rolling this way but what I do is I take the um, shish kebab stick off after after I roll it three or four times I take the stick off because I like to have control over um, over what how the how the uh, paper is sitting so you can do it this way and I just grab it with my two fingers and I roll it with my thumb and this is left-handed so if I was right-handed I would grab it like this with my two fingers and then roll it with my thumb and see you can adjust it so that way it doesn't it they all it all stays even um, I don't know. Let's see. See how it's all even? So that's why I roll it like that. Um, I think most people keep it on their, on their stick or their rolling thing. But I just like to take mine off. I like to have more control over it. Then what I do, and you're going to need something underneath your craft table because, um, because, uh, this is a messy process you can put your glue on or your Mod Podge on um, like this but usually what I do for more control is I put it down on the table and I do this and it's faster that way okay then you take it and you well, you can't see because my hand is in the way. You take it and you roll it back up the rest of the way and kind of, pin not pinch it, but like roll it a little bit so it stays. Now see, this is um, kind of wonky here. Well, well, we'll fix that later. If, you, if your edges aren't even, like if you can see how this edge isn't even, um, we will fix that later. Um, I'll show you how to do that when we're done. Um, okay, so then you have your paper bead. Uh, so I'm going to set that aside. I'm going to do one more with my skewer stick, and then I'll show you how to do with the other stick. Oh, you do not want to put glue on the entire strip. I tried that whenever I first started making paper beads, and you can't move it around if you do that. So... I don't put glue on my entire strip. So what we're, we're going to fold it over a little bit. Okay. Start rolling. Okay. Take the stick off. And roll, roll, roll. Roll, roll, roll your bead. Till we reach the end. <laughs> My daughter thought that was funny. <laughs> okay, so turn it the other way and keep rolling. Rolling, rolling, rolling. Keep rolling, rolling. Okay, I don't know where that song came from, but okay, then we're going to put our <laughs> glue on. Okay. And. Now you want to make sure that your that the edge of your strip is down all the way. If it's not like that, you can add a little bit more glue. 
and because if you don't whenever you go to seal it it's gonna that's gonna show up and it's not gonna be down and it's not gonna be um, pressed down enough okay so that's two and that's with the stick now I'm gonna show you this now I will say with this stick right here um, I bought five of these because they were only two dollars a piece and I saw them and I'm like hmm I like that and I really like this color of wood so I think we might have a giveaway in the future that I will be giving one of these away to someone and I'm going to show you how to use it right now it also I'll put the link underneath um, on where I bought it from if you want to buy your own so we're going to take this um, stick and it has a little I don't think you can see it well maybe you can I'm sorry my nerves are bad so I, I shake but um, if you see that it has like a little uh, indention in it a uh, little um, thing where you can slide the paper so you slide the paper in now you can roll it towards you or away from you so I'm gonna roll it towards me and I'm gonna roll it up three or four times and then take it off I always take my bead off okay so then I'm gonna roll it like I did with the other one just keep rolling where I have the control over how the bead um, sits how the paper sits all the way till towards the end and then I'm gonna set it down and add my Mod Posh you can use Elmer's glue um, you can use Eileen's tacky glue um, Eileen's tacky glue is not it, it's kind of I don't like using it because it's kind of expensive it's not really expensive but for this project it's expensive so I do have some um, I do have some but it's very very tacky and it doesn't you don't need that much glue it's very thick so it doesn't uh, it doesn't it, I mean it sticks but I don't know I just like the thinness of the Mod Podge uh, and how the Mod Podge um, is thin enough to where it'll cover it without having too much blobs of uh, glue everywhere and okay so I just did this one the same way and so let's see roll all the way to the edge and add some glue not all the way to the edge but almost to the edge this is about uh, about an inch and a fourth um, you can do it like maybe to an inch and then put the and uh, put the Mod Podge on the last inch of the paper okay all right um, okay I will do one more and I have a tip for you why I said to use a pencil um, was because this little line right here if you use a thin paper uh, like um, computer paper it will show up if you use anything like markers or anything on it um, if you use paint it won't show up but if you use any kind of markers or anything like I have um, Sharpie markers it shows through on the other side so I use a pencil and I erase it and if you erase it then it won't show to show up on your other bead on your bead on the other side okay so I'm gonna put it in the little um, in the little uh, thing and it's just a little slider little slide in I'm gonna roll it this way so you can see actually I won't roll it that way I guess you can't roll it that way <laughs> hmm <laughs> okay that's what you get when you buy a new tool and you don't test it out very often <laughs> okay so then I'm gonna roll it and you can really keep rolling it up I just I just take mine off um, it tends to be better I like it better that way um, okay so then we're gonna roll all the way all the way up 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 
into about, let's see, this is about one inch. And I'm going to put my glue on, my Mod Podge. You can use any kind of, you can use your, your handmade Mod Podge as well for this. If you're using, um, if you're using uh, printer paper, I wouldn't suggest using handmade Mod, mod Podge. Um, you know, the kind you mix Elmer's glue and, uh, and water because it's very, very thin and it might rip your paper. Um, this Mod Podge works well for, um, for regular paper, um, regular printer paper. And so, uh, I would just use Mod Podge if you're going to use regular paper. This, right, this is thick enough. This is the, car, the, um, scrapbook paper. It's thick enough to where you could use, um, handmade Mod Podge. Uh, Elmer's glue works as well. If you just want to use Elmer's glue and just use a paintbrush and, and spread it on, you can put um, your glue on the little plate and just put the paintbrush in it and spread it on like that. That would work too. Um, now with thicker papers like card stocks, um, Mod Podge will work. It takes a little more work to get it. I would not suggest using homemade Mod Podge um, unless you add a ratio of less water to it because uh, the paper is really thick and it needs a lot of a lot of more glue to hold it together um, if you want to use Elmer's glue for that that would be perfect for that too but the Mod Podge works good for pretty much everything so we're back and I have my beads uh, rolled um, this is regular scrapbook paper so it, they're not as thick as the cardstock, but um, uh, uh, one thing I forgot to tell you that you needed was this. Uh, this is a medium grit sandpaper. And what we're going to do is we're going to take care of the edges of the beads because they're a little bit uneven. And so what we're going to do, <coughs> excuse me, is you're going to put your bead flat on the, the sandpaper and roll it in a, like a circle. Not roll it, but move it in a circle. Just a couple of times like that. And it makes a very even, if my, if my camera will focus. Oh, okay. Well, it makes an even um, flat surface on the side. So, and you do that with all of them. And I am having so many problems with this camera. I just, for taking pictures, it's great. It's a cool pix. Uh, Nikon cool pics. For taking pictures, it's great. But for video, not so much. I only get 20 minutes and my camera cut off earlier, which is why uh, you probably didn't hear what I was saying about the glues. So what I was saying about glues is that it's the thicker the paper, the thicker the glue that you need. So I'm going to finish these, just rolling, rolling, rolling. And you see all the paper coming off, but that won't affect the size that much. Um, it won't affect the size that much, so because it's just a little bit of the edges of the paper. So I'm going to go ahead and do these, and then I'll be back.
Do you have to sit there? <laughs> My uh, kitty, Ishelle, decided she wanted to help make beads. Say hi. <laughs> she, <laughs> she did. Okay. Last two beads. Um, are you really going to lay there? <laughs> <laughs> uh, the joys of having a cat. <laughs> hey, what are you doing? Okay. Come on, get down. I know you're comfortable, but get down. Okay. So now um, we have our beads done and we are going to seal them. Um, they're ve it's very even now. Uh, as you can see, probably. Um, let's see. So we have all of our beads here. Now we're going to take our monofilament, our. Um, What's it called? Our um, nylon thread. And I did see how this one. Uh, can you see it? It's kind of. Um, here it is. It's kind of out a little bit. I'm going to sand that one again. Okay. That's much better. Now it's out on the other side. But. Um, there we go. Okay. Now, take a length of your monofilament. Me zoom out here. Okay. And I have a trick that I use. Um, the toothpicks for. What I'm going to do is I'm going to wrap my monofilament around the bottom of my toothpick around or around the middle of my toothpick um, and tie a knot and then tie a second knot. If I can tie the knot. So then you have double knot, and I know you probably cannot see the monofilament because it's so clear, but that will keep, will hold your beads on. Then I'm going to string my beads onto my mallow filament, onto my um, nylon beading thread or whatever thread you're using. The reason I use nylon um, or monofilament or um, you know fishing line or whatever is because it doesn't stick to the sealant. The sealant doesn't stick to it, um, and the beads won't stick to it. You can use thread. But it's a little bit more, it, you have to check it to make sure they're not sticking. Uh, so once you have all of your beads on, we're going to dip it in our polycrylic. Poly see how that, um, see how that sets on there? Um, that way you can hang it. And I hang mine in my windowsill. I'm not going to show you that step. Um, if you have a drying rack, you can hang it in your drying rack. Um, you can hang it. I put thumbtacks um, on the side of my uh, windowsill and hang it in my windowsill. Just remember, this is going to drip. So anywhere you put it, you need to have something underneath it to catch all the drips. Otherwise, you're going to have this stuff stuck everywhere. Uh, then, um, once I've done, once I've strung all the beads, I add another toothpick with a little bit of space at the top. 
um, like about an inch and that's so that you can um, and that's so that you can move the uh, the the beads before they're completely dry so that they don't stick to each other which is a very important step otherwise they stick to each other and you kind of have their kind of the you can see where they stuck together and it doesn't have a clean as clean of a line on the beads so so there we go have have that on both sides now we're gonna take our our acrylic um, let's see all right so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna stick the beads into the um, polycrylic and take a toothpick or something like a toothpick a stick or something and push them down in so that they're all covered and I just leave them for about a few seconds and then when you take them out you wrap your finger around the bead and pull and this gets off the excess and see it comes out and all that all that excess drips off and then once it's out like that I do again from the top all the way to the bottom and you see some of the colors coming off that's okay because it'll mix with the thing so then you have um, the polycrylic on all the beads and then you hang it up to dry um, and I will be back in a minute well not in a minute well in a second for you guys actually uh, to show you how um, to show you what the beads look like once they're they're in the polycrylic thank you for watching and I'll see you in a minute